In this video, I want to break down the camera and lighting setup from a recent shoot I did with man-made furniture. So here goes. properly in the car when I'm doing these little videos. This is my first shoot of 2021 and keeping it nice and simple, just doing a little video for my brother. He's releasing a new product and we're just going there to film a small little trailer, a small little promo for his social channels. So we've also got our buddy Punit coming today. I mean, he's basically our brother. He's coming today to direct the video. It's always been me filming, Ricky doing or whatever he's doing on camera and then Punit directing. Punit has a very good idea of what shots work for whatever products they're gonna be selling. I'm just gonna pause and throw up a couple of shots of previous projects that us three have shot together. And the usual look we go for is directional and focus lighting. So it highlights whatever Ricky's doing on camera. And on top of that, if we can, we'll make sure we're capturing the raw sounds of whatever Ricky's doing with his machinery to, to give that viewer the feeling like they're actually there and are watching this live. I'm actually really looking forward today. I mean, I haven't filmed anything since December 17th, 2020, and it's now January 23rd, 2021. So hopefully I'm not that rusty. Just pulled up, here he is, making as much noise as he can. Smile. <laughs> if anyone's thinking why are these guys shooting, why are these guys not wearing masks, it's because Ricky and I are in the same bubble. And when Punit arrives, you'll see me and him are wearing masks. Ricky's not because he's on camera. I mean, I apologize for the noise that he's making. He's trying to make as much noise as he can whilst I'm filming, but we're gonna be using this area here as our background. He's gonna be where he currently is. We'll have a goalpost rig going over the top that will have my Aperture Nova on it. We will have maybe the key light, maybe the 300D with a dome on it, with a light dome coming in from that area there lighting him up and from this angle we'll probably put a 120d with a barn door just giving like a slice of light across the background there so only a three lights out we'll turn all the house lights off the only thing we've got to consider is we've got these three panels well kind of two panels for this area of window light coming in from behind so to start with the goalpost rig we've just got a combo stand here gonna put a big ben in do the same on the other side scaff pole goes in the middle here and close it and lock it off and then we'll attach the Nova onto the top of that with a Matalini clamp. Are you still talking? You tell me you want Are you actually still talking? My god, I can't believe you're actually still talking. When you ask me it's not Yeah, come in, but don't talk about anything. When you ask me to help you Shut up! Is that tight, fully tight? Bro, I can tighten, it's so tight that fing up on off. Don't do it. Don't, don't show off because then you've got to take it off. Oh yeah. So I would usually use a barrel clamp to attach my Nova to this scaff pole, but I've got those on order taking ages to come because of COVID. So I borrowed the two big Ben clamps and this Matalini from my gaffer Riaz. I quickly went there and picked it up earlier and I'm going to use this and safety chain it.
Punnett's arrived. What are you doing? Just cutting out some samples, some material for the box. Nice. Punnett's been begging me for his introduction on YouTube. I don't know why you keep saying this. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> So we're using my Canon C200, we're using one of the shape accessories that are going to allow me to go onto my shoulder rig. I'm also using the Rode NTG4 Plus, got the two handles, got the grip relocator for the shoulder rig. I'm not actually using Vlogs for this shoot because I just needed to move around a lot. I needed to get into some awkward positions and the V-lock was just going to block me. I know I've got the rods at the back, they're just stuck inside my base plate. And we're starting off with using my Canon 50mm 1.2. I pretty much use this for majority of the shoot and I did swap over to the Canon 100mm macro for a lot of it as well. All right, so we're pretty much set up now. Got the C200 here with a 15 mil on. I will be using this on shoulder rig and going handheld with it. We've just got some ambient light coming in from these windows behind. So what I'm doing is I've matched my Nova to daylight and having my 300D to daylight. And then what I've done at the back is just chuck some CTO on this 120D with that slice of light just to warm it up a little bit and create a little bit more depth. What I've done is I've put the grids on the Light Dome 2 and the Nova up there so it just focuses the light on this area. I really want to create this dark atmospheric look and the grids stop the light from spreading everywhere where I don't want the light to go. So this is what it looks like on the back of my camera. Hopefully it focuses. Put it look into the camera. Yeah, nice. This is how it looks from this angle here. Just a three light setup. The last step to add some depth is haze machine. So we won't overdo it. We don't want it to look like a house on fire, but we... Why are you doing that, Rick? Why are you doing that? Can I throw bottles of beach, please? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, we don't want it to look like a house on fire, so we'll just let it settle for a bit and then we'll waft it in and kind of let it spread out across the whole area. That's how it's looking on camera. So every time you breathe in here, it's actually really cold, so you can see the breath and it adds that little bit more of a look to it. But yeah, we're still pretty much in the same spot. Just tweaked the output powers of the lights. Now we're starting with the first shot, but Ricky being Rick has forgotten one of the props at home. Yeah, I know, and I forgot it at home. I need it here. All right, so I told Ricky to look really sad and upset because this is how house lighting makes me feel. This is what Ricky's unit lights look like when they're on with the same exact LUT that I had on the rest of the grade, but on this shot here. So it's got a green tint to it. It's not very flattering. There's no control over the light. It's just a massive spill. And don't worry about the little bit that's blurred out. That's just a product that Ricky's got coming out in a little while. So it's just having to be blurred out for now. And then taking house lights off and using just my lights, my lighting setup, this is what you get. So you can see how much more flattering that looks on Ricky's face, how much more professional it looks. And it just looks 10 times, 100 times better. But yeah, I'm gonna play this through because what I do here is I turn them all off. There you go. And that's just my 300D that's on. And you can see the little pocket of light under his eye there, the Rembrandt lighting. And I know for a fact when I shoot a close up his face, I'm going to be on the shadow side of Ricky. So whenever I'm capturing him, I'm always on the shadow side. But let's continue. Let's carry on playing this. So next up is the Nova, which you'll see turn on and already that. I wanted a hair light on him. Obviously he's wearing a woolly hat, but I wanted that little bit of definition between Ricky and the background. I wanted that separation to be visible, but I also needed a bit of light on the actual table, which the Nova was giving me with the angle that I had it set to because the 300D that I had was only illuminating Ricky because the grid I had and the angle I had it, I only wanted that focused on Rick. There was just a bit of spill on the background, not too much. What I have to take into consideration here is that this is later on in the day. We lost light like crazy. We started shooting at like 3 p.m. By the time we started getting our first shot to our last shot, the outside light had just gone. So what we started off with the wide shots, we had the light coming in from the background. We had the practical light, as it were, coming in from the back. And that's why I matched the Nova on top to emulate more of the window light coming in. But by the time we got round to filming this, obviously the daylight had gone. So 
where there would usually be some daylight coming in would be on this window panel here and there's I'm pretty sure there's one there as well so these guys would be spraying in on him it was just giving a little bit of separation between ricky and the background but let's carry on afterwards i turn on the 120d now the difference of the 120d that that makes so you've got daylight lighting all around and just to create a little bit more separation with colors i added the 120d with a cto so a bit of orange gel over it just to separate the him in the background that little bit more So yesterday it was really cold, it was really cold inside the unit. It was at a point where we couldn't even feel our hands and we just wanted to get home. We just wanted to get in some heat. So I don't ever do this, I don't ever leave my kit set up anywhere, but I had to do it yesterday. It was just too, it was just too cold and I couldn't, couldn't bear packing it up and just, it, yeah, I don't know why as well yesterday I kind of stupidly wore shorts and I just couldn't deal with it anymore. So. We left the kit there, we left the lights. All I took home was my C200 kit, my lenses, my R5, and we're just heading back now to the unit to go and collect it the following day of the shoot. And it has been snowing this whole morning and it looks incredible. One thing we're really lucky with is the drive into the unit, into the area is absolutely gorgeous. But that's pretty much it for this video. That's the lighting breakdown, the lighting I was using, the camera I was using, the rig I was using, the lenses I was using, that's pretty much everything about that shoot. Now, even though it's freezing, it was really nice to be back out there filming and filming another project for Man Made Furniture. And it was also something completely new for me to film more behind the scenes content, breakdowns, you know, walking around with a camera, just breaking things down, how I'm gonna do things, what I plan to do, and if it actually works. If there was anything that wasn't spoken enough of, if there was anything that wasn't detailed enough, just drop me a shout, drop me a DM, whatever you wanna do. I'll try and help and hopefully you can try and create this kind of lighting setup in one of your videos.